Hey everybody, welcome to another CrushLabPoker.com hand review, and I'm going to take a look at a hand that I played about five years ago on Poker Night in America in early 2016 at the Thunder Valley Casino up around Sacramento. This is actually going to be something that I'm going to be doing with this channel over the next few months, is actually looking back at some old TV hands that I've played and sort of discuss how newer school no limit theory has changed and take a look at some of the mistakes that I think that I made in some of these some of these hands. The other thing about uh, this particular video that's really interesting is there's a few topical people in terms of contemporary news at the table. We have uh, Shamoff, Polly Hapatia at the table, Jason Kalakanas, we've got Matt Glantz, Maria Ho, Part of the reason why I like taking a look at this hand with Shamoth in it is because uh, he's been quite outspoken about the uh, whole GameStop thing over the last week or two. And uh, Jason Calacanis and Shamoth actually host a podcast called The All In Podcast. You can check it out on YouTube. Check it out uh, on Apple Podcasts. I would highly recommend it, especially the last episode, because these guys have built companies. They've seeded money in companies. And uh, they are talking about, you know, the, the corruption, basically, of, of the system. Also, too, you can check out Poker Night in America's YouTube channel. And they put up all kinds of highlights uh, of best hands over the last, say, eight years that they've been, you know, shooting high-stakes cash games. So in this particular hand, we're actually playing 2550 No Limit. But Shamoff is actually in the double straddle. So in this particular hand, it's actually 25, 50, 100, 200. <coughs> David just has so many chips. So many. Disgusting. Damn. I might have left. That's That's really good. disgusting. Well, I actually, I actually have to root against you because you have too many chips. It's 30 dimes. 30 dimes. How much is that? 18 and a quarter, right? You're allowed to root against your friend if they have too many chips. Look at this game. is out of the muck. It's Bar. out of the muck. Bart, good decision here, Bart. Out of the this muck. It's going to decide the rest of your night right here. It's true. It's true. So out of the muck. So yummy. Bart is analyzing every move. Going, he's going from stack to stack, he's adding the numbers <laughs> up, doing the crutch live poker routine. He's looking at hit. I think he needs to know how many chips he has. Now I start the hand with just under 20,000. David Baker has both of us covered. Shamoth right around 15,000. One of the other interesting things too about live poker is that when you take a look at sort of the straddle size, you know, I'm just under 100 big blinds. But sometimes if you're not having straddles every single hand, people sometimes will miss out on that or they won't really take into account how much dead money is actually in the pot and how the pot size basically gets larger and larger because of really that first raise size. So we're playing seven-handed and we start the hand with me basically under the gun, but in the effective hijack seat, and I pick up ace-king offsuit, and I raise it up here to 625. It gets folded around here to David Baker in the small blind, and he makes a pretty light three bet here with ace-jack offsuit to 1800. This sort of, again, brings it back to, even in 2016, this was sort of an older school style of play. Baker played tons of hours on Poker Night in America, and he was probably the biggest winner, like over seven or eight seasons. But you would start to see some of this sort of older school three bet with like King X suited. He pulled that like a couple times on me. Stuff that you don't really see nowadays when people have really done like a lot of brute force calculating in terms of what is optimal preflop. So, you know, nowadays I'm probably just going to fold if I'm him in this spot. You don't really want to do a whole lot of flat calling here, uh, especially with three or four blinds behind you. It certainly is going to be a three better fold, but me basically opening from under the gun, I think this is probably, you know, just, just a fold. But he decides to three bet to 1800 gets folded through the blinds, Maria Ho, and the first straddler, and it gets over to Shamoff, who flat calls here in the double straddle. 
Now, one of the things that I've talked about a lot over on my training site and my training material, Crush Live Poker, is this is just like a dream spot for the initial raiser. You really want to avoid flat calling three bets basically from in between because it gives the opportunity for that initial raiser, which was me in this case, to four bet and basically shut you out of the hand. Now, this is my first mistake. Looking back at this, I, it's almost cringeworthy. And again, I can't necessarily remember at the time if I necessarily realized the double straddle and my stack depth, but this is just a mandatory four bat out of 100 big blinds against pretty much a guy that's V-pipping pretty wide. I mean, Schmoff was probably playing 40 or 50% of his hands. Unless he's playing super cagey, he's just not going to be that strong with the flat call. I block aces and kings. There's a bunch of dead money out there, over 4,000 in dead money. This really should be a very, very easy four bet for me. I don't really have to make it too large. I never want to really go above, say, that one third threshold in my stack, especially pre flop. And the reason why I don't want to do that is because once I go above one third, I'm basically committed to the hand. Like if I go to like 8,000, if Baker shoves, he knows I'm always going to call. So whenever you get to that threshold of about one third your stack preflop, it's actually better to just to move all in or to, you know, raise less than one third your stack. I could probably have very, very easily made it maybe like 4,500 to 5,000, you know, something like that. And probably would have just gotten two folds. But instead, I decide to call and uh, we go three ways to a multi-way flop in a three-bet pot. Yeah. And flop oh, once. Oh, against oh, ace-king and ace-jack. Are you freaking oh kidding gosh. me? gosh. Are you kidding me? This is when you just get all the chips. Are you kidding me? Look in how a, cool he's playing around. By the way, in a three-bet pot. That's how billionaires look when they flop quads, boys and girls. Is there any way Bart doesn't go broke? <laughs> no. What I mean, the think? problem is, I mean, Shamath, Shamath is one of those guys wow. who could be in there with like 5-4 suited. Like, he can have a weird hand, but... Only two, him with only the call. Yeah. It, but it, Baker's it, in there too, by the way. I know, with another ace. That could be the one thing that saves Bart, actually. So with the pot just over 5,600, I get a really, really good flop. Ace-4-4 four, four with two clubs. You can see I've got ace-king with the king of clubs. And now David Baker checks... And Shamoth checks pretty quickly here as well. Now, I'm really, really loving this spot because I knew that Baker, like I said, he threw in a lot of sort of light three bets. And what I was actually thinking at the time was he very well might have like a weak suited ace, even though I have an ace in my hand, and he's not going to fold, basically. He also could have like a pair like tens, jacks, queens, kings. And, you know, in this case with Shamoth behind him, it's probably questionable. Like he is probably going to have to fold with a player behind. I don't want to go like crazy, crazy large and basically drive everybody out of the pot. I'm never expecting basically an ace to fold, but of course here I'm going to bet. So when you're in a multi-way pot, usually you want to bet a little bit on the smaller side to basically force your opponents to defend. Uh, I took about 2,200 here for sizing, you know, one third the size of the pot would be about 17 or 1800. Uh, I went a little bit larger than that, but the stacks really aren't that deep. I can easily get all of the money in. So maybe in retrospect, if I had to do over again, put me back in time, maybe I go 18 or 1900. But when I do bet, I actually get both players to call. Now at the time when both these players called, I mean, I thought that there was a pretty good chance that they actually both had an ace. Somebody could have a flush draw, but I've got the king of clubs. I really thought it was unlikely that someone had a four here, given the pre-flop configuration, especially not, say, David Baker. Uh, I really thought both players had an ace, and I just wanted to really get maximum value. So I was pretty happy, actually, when both players called. Theoretically. Yes. Oh, oh never bye still, bye. Okay. Done. Well, Done. I mean, he still can't beat the four, by the way. I mean, he, doesn't, he still can't beat the four, though. It's pretty, pretty hard not to go broke here. Look at your moth eyeing on Bart right there. You gotta be kidding me. Why don't you just throw an ace or a king on the river too? Wow, this just is for, so just for, oh. <laughs> like just, just to put more salt in the wound. You gotta be kidding me. Wow, this is an insane hand. I'm only hoping for Bart's sake that the cards are still wrong. <laughs> I mean, dude, we, we there were it's Good the point. same deck we just had. 
Brian just went over to do it. I mean, the cards could be wrong. The king clearly That's was wrong. True. There's a chance this is not right. But if it is, it's awesome for Shamal. Wow, this is an insane hand. I can't believe what's happening right We now. don't know if the cards are right or not, but... Are those cards right? <laughs> we don't... I mean, are the cards... We don't know if the... But we know the flop is right, yes. We don't know if the cards are... 100% right, but there's no reason for us to think they're not right. Ace Jack gets out of the way. Baker gets off cheap. I, he, Shamal's got a smooth call here, right? Come on. Oh, he shoves oh. here. Oh, oh no. He called right Bart's away. Bart's drawing too. dead oh. with Ace King. Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm going to go on a limb and say the cards weren't wrong one, one based one on Bart's one reaction. Cards were correct. Based on Bart's wow. reaction, I'm going to go on a limb and say the cards dead. were not wrong. I'm drawing dead. Yeah, yeah, over the show, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Ace King. Yep. Wow. Shamoth doesn't have him Wild covered, though. Burgers. I kind of wanted a king or an ace in the river. So now the pot was just over 12,000. I've got 15,000 and change left in my stack. Like I said, just over about a pot size bet left. I can really sort of bet small here on the turn to get all the money in. Turns the king of diamonds. Obviously, it improves my hand. It's going to get checked over to me. And I remember thinking about this at the time for a split second. I actually considered checking this back, not because I was scared of a four, but if Baker actually had an ace here in the small blind and I bet again, his kicker was not going to play. He also has Shamoth behind him and I'm also betting twice, basically defending to his three bet. So I'm going to have a lot of aces here as well. I also thought that there was just, you know, once in a while, there's one combo of pocket kings out there too. You know, when I was thinking about the, the type of range that Baker might say check call with, you know, on the flop, but I took a step back and I was like, well, I don't think Shamoth's ever folding an ace here. Get some value from some flush draws, you know, Broadway flush draws now sort of turn combo draws. So I thought better of it. And of course I'm going to bet. So here I bet 5,500, which again is probably a little bit on the larger side. I think in retrospect, I probably could have bet like 4,000. You know, if I get one call, the pot's going to be 21,000. It sets up about a half pot size shove for me here, betting 5,500. The pot's going to be like 23 or 24. It's just really, really hard for me, you know, to kind of have a bluff here. One of the things that you can sometimes do with the stack size is actually bet pot on turn or even sometimes over bet. And then if somebody calls you and you have a bluff, you basically just give up. You know, you do that with uh, some of your combo draws and you just realize there isn't really going to be a whole lot of fold equity. They're going to have at least an ace if they call. So maybe a little bit on the larger side here, you know, looking back at it in retrospect. And what that larger size actually does is it really puts Baker in a tough, tough spot here with ace jack. Like I was talking about before. He's really only chopping here at best. He's actually losing now to obviously both of us, but he's only chopping at best. He, he has to worry about Shamoth behind him and me betting twice. So it looks like it's like kind of a crazy fold. I don't think that he's going to be making this fold obviously heads up to me, but I think it's a pretty solid fold, uh, you know, the way that the hand played out. Now back over here to Shamoth, who's got about 11,675. He's facing a $5,500 bet. The thing with his stack size, though, is that if he calls, he leaves such a tiny portion of the pot basically left in his stack. This is a situation where a lot of people miss. I actually think the right play here for him is to check jam or fold. You don't want to really get into a situation where you're just calling and you've got, say, maybe a quarter of a pot size bet left or less, because if I were to be pulling one of those plays where I was betting a combo draw and then I was just going to basically give up if called again, then you're just sort of giving me a reverse free card. Like, I'm not going to bluff the river and you're going to basically allow me to, to realize my equity. So when he jams here, I mean, I sort of give like a pained look, but to be honest with you, I mean, the pot's almost 30,000. It's only 6,000 for me to call. I, I'm getting, you know, almost five to one in this spot. And, uh, you know, I think that he could easily just have an ace here. You know, once in a while, maybe he's going to have a four, but I beat really any ace. And uh, unfortunately for me, I did make the call, and he rolls over a hand that I am absolutely drawing dead to. You know, it would have been a slightly better story if I had, like, pocket aces or pocket kings or if an ace or a king came on the river. 
that didn't happen. This is obviously a big cooler, but there's really nothing I can do. And the biggest mistake that I made here really is pre-flop. I should be four betting and just getting this in with Baker, or even if Shamoff basically back raises all in at 100 big blinds. But again, sometimes if you're playing, you know, in a two blind game and then just one guy at the table is straddling and then there's a double straddle, sometimes you lose sort of track of the effective stack with the straddle and people won't get it in as light as they should because really in this hand, I'm playing 100 big blinds effective and, you know, with Shamoth, 75 big blinds effective. But this was definitely one fun hand and I'm sure that Shamoth remembers this as well. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button and like the video. Be sure to tune in as I will be doing more hand reviews from Poker Night in America, TCH Live. I might be analyzing some high stakes poker hands from the newest season and uh, be sure to watch my call-in show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call-in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out crushlivepoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.